computer and I... So good evening. Um, this is um, the, the last online uh, lecture session of our um, joint course with the Athena European University and uh, partners in uh, Tunisia, in Israel, in Slovenia, all over the, the place, in uh, Netherlands as well. So this is the last online lecture before we will start the face-to-face -face week in Crete. Uh, with more lectures, but more workshops and also networking events that all of us we are going to expose and we are going to get to know each other better to get introduced to other universities, the academics, to establish new network for their universities, but also collaboration and for the students to learn the opportunities for studies and uh, mobility opportunities in all over the Europe and all over the world. I hope that we are going to achieve this. Uh, but before we will meet face to face and uh, in Crete, we are, I'm, I'm very happy to um, introduce and welcome to friends um, uh, Nadia uh, uh, from Nadia Esamali from uh, KEF in uh, Tunisia, and also um, Thomas Ayaz, a Greek, a Slovenian Greek, he comes to Greece and Crete, you know. Every, every year, and also he's teaching our Erasmus students through an online course. So this is also another opportunity that we can discuss with, uh, um, uh, with people that they will come, the academics, how we can online share Erasmus courses. So whatever Erasmus courses I'm doing for our Erasmus students to be able online to offer these courses online to students in Western Galilee, in Holod, in Kiev, in Slovenia, in Vigo, so this also shows that how we can collaborate and um, uh, have a win-win situation in this global higher education network that we are creating. Uh, so I will immediately give the floor to Nadia to start. Now, the today's topic is like self-management. Very happily, I'm right, I, 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 when I'm traveling from airport to airport, I, I, I bought very nice books and I bought a very nice books about high performers. And one of the essential points of high performance is self-management, the self-management of what you can control. Otherwise, your brain is going to get crazy. So whatever you can control, self-manage your emotions. Uh, this is an essential for you in order to high perform. Hi, Fabian. Nice to meeting you from Nigeria. Uh, yeah. So, uh, 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 Nadia, the floor is yours. And then we will move to Thomas, who is going to continue with a process. Um, a technique, I think, I remember, I remember well, about Management 3.0. So, floor, the Nadia, the floor is yours, and thank you very much, both of you and the participants, for the participation. I stop now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you so much, Costas, for uh, this warm welcome. Um, well, congratulations for organizing this mega program. I know um, how much effort it's required. Uh, so on behalf of the Higher Institute of Technological Studies, we are happy to join the, the BIP, the Blended Intensive uh, Program, uh, Soft Skills and uh, Digital Skills. For me, it's a pleasure to join uh, this circle of uh, speakers. Um, here also I can see some familiar names and faces. It's a pleasure to, to meet you again and looking forward to uh, seeing you uh, next week in Khania, Lakhet. So, um, Kostas, uh, do I have uh, the permission to share my screen, right? Yeah, of course, of course. Okay, so... Uh, let, me, let me tell you that this effort is all of us. All of us, we are here and we created this. This is a joint ah. thing. Yeah? Okay. So let me share my screen. Okay, can you see my screen, right? Uh, we can see the Zoom. Uh, if you okay. now, excellent, excellent. Okay. If you can make it full screen right now, it's going to be even better. So do. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. So um, as Kostas introduced me, I'm, um, I'm Nadia Samali. I'm uh, a Tunisian business uh, lecturer from the Higher Institute of Technological Studies of KEF uh, Tunisia. Uh, my institute is EZ KEF. Why it's EZ KEF? Because as you know, here in Tunisia, we are using French to teach. 
we, uh, it's our second language. So EZ is an abbreviation in French, Institut Supérieur des Études Technologiques. It's the same as Higher Institute uh, of Technological Studies. So I have um, 18 years of experience since 2005 in teaching business and soft skills, uh, three years in Saudi Arabia with an American provider. Um, let me just um, present my uh, institute. The Higher Institute of Technological Studies of CAF belongs to uh, the EZ uh, network flag beer of the technological uh, formation in Tunisia. Uh, has cons constituted since its creation in September 2002, one of the main supplier of the market of the employment in higher technicians, uh, as well in the industrial sector than, uh, than in the services sector. You can see here the location of my small institute, which is um, in the north uh, western of Tunisia one of um, the regions with the highest agriculture, ecotourism, and food industry con concentration in the country. So um, today uh, class or today meeting, uh, we will focus on demonstrate self-management skills. Uh, first of all, please excuse my French accent. <laughs> demonstrate uh, self-management skills. Um, as you know, uh, self-management skills are uh, characteristics uh, that helps an employee or a student to feel and um, be more uh, productive in the workplace. So the purpose of my presentation, uh, just let me, okay. The purpose of my presentation is uh, to develop knowledge, understanding and skills in uh, managing uh, uh, your work as a student or as employee within the area of responsibility. Also, I will try uh, to, uh, to develop skills in being able to plan, uh, organize and manage uh, your work, your own work as a student or as employee and understand uh, how to maintain and improve this. So just, let me okay so i have two objectives uh, for this um, presentation the first one is uh, i will try to let you understand how to plan and maintain work effectively the second objective for me is understand how to review own skills and development so here is the content of my presentation. Um, it's divided into uh, three uh, topics. The first one, um, I will talk about time management, then review and develop skills. Finally, the PDP, the personal development plan or uh, the personal learning plan for students. So, uh, please cost us uh, when you see any comments or a question um, in the chat, please let me know because I can't see, I'm sharing my screen, I can't see uh, any um, uh, any comment, okay? Yeah, yeah. So, time management, here I will talk about time management for students. Um, Apply a proper study time management strategies can help you as students to save time and stress. So it's important to know how to deal with our time. Uh, the second point, it will enable you to spend more time for your hobbies and spare time activities. For our students, uh, the idea is when I deal, when I organize my time and I'm focusing on my studies, but here, uh, I can say that when you uh, you deal, when you organize your your time, you have more time for you, for your hobbies and for your uh, spare uh, time activities. It will help you to empower your study efforts as you will be able to spend more time for important uh, subjects. So um, uh, study time management, as you know, is uh, the process of applying skills and techniques 
why to save time uh, study efficient say, set aims and this study goals efficiently so uh, students that apply time management will be able one to build procrastination to focus their full attention on their studies and especially which uh, will finally allow students to spend more time with leisure uh, activities. So it's important for our students to know that they have to follow the process and um, organize their, their time. Why? To spend more time with their uh, leisure activities. Uh, so now, I will try to explain and uh, to present the vital steps in successful time management, the steps that we have to follow to, to succeed our um, time management, to succeed our um, how to organize our time. So the first step for me is prepare a term schedule or calendar. This is our first step to um, to succeed our time management so as students or employee you only have 24 hours a day 168 hours a week and x hours a term so uh, what does it mean effective time management it means that you use your given time in the most efficient way uh, so uh, it's important to prepare uh, your schedule, your calendar, where you write down all your, um, your uh, assignments, your duties, uh, and if necessary, add if you have a due date or if you have a submission date. And in addition to that, try to record your planet leisure activities in addition to our work, our homework. So uh, such as gym, such as sport. So the first step to succeed your time management is prepare a term schedule or a calendar in which you put all your tasks and your leisure activities. The second um, step is get an organizer. I know that all our students are using uh, their smartphone one hour per day. So this could be uh, your smartphone. The organizer could be your smartphone or um, a college blog or some sort of homework booklet. For me, for example, I'm, um, I'm using a single paper on top of all other uh, others into the ring binder I use during my courses. So after I uh, accomplish the task, just I take uh, next to it. So um, it encourages you to, uh, to do the, the, the ta task number two, for example. So step number one is to schedule uh, step number two is to get an organizer step number three this is important step um after coming from college or from work try to evaluate the amount of time you can invest for your studies think about it uh, this is where you start to manage your study time. So you should take up to 15 minutes for this. Think about the amount of, think about your assignment, your tasks, your projects. So make sure to include time for studying, for completing tasks, for submission, for projects. So this is the, th the third step. You have to think about um, uh, and uh, to, to take some time to think about um, uh, your tasks and your assignment and make sure to include all your uh, projects. Uh, also, an important thing uh, to know that you have to uh, schedule your time depending on your energy level. Do you know what is uh, an energy level? Please uh, raise your hand or uh, just uh, comment or just write in the chat. What is an energy level during the day? We have an energy level. Do we have an idea about energy level? Uh, 
can I pretend to be the student? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so sometimes, ah, no. At least there is a question from a student of ours from Georgia, I think, if yes. I remember well. No. Uh, myself also, you know, I, I don't I don't have a direct answer, but I, I will say to the students, like, to plan, you know, their day and, uh, and uh, try to plan to do things that they are very important when, you know, they are rest, when, you know, they have a full power. Uh, like, probably myself, I'm a morning guy. So when I would like to perform something, I'm waking up very early in the morning and I'm doing in the morning. Yeah. Other people, they have, you know, this concentration or this energy level to do work in, in the night. So, yes. so it seems that there is an energy level that defines how to plan your day, if I would like to connect everything. Like, you know, the most important things when you have a full power, when you would like to reply to emails, for example, you know, to the, the yeah. period of time that your energy is going down. Uh, otherwise, you can drink a, a Red Bull and you can have an energy, you know, <laughs> uh, anytime in the day. <laughs> That's right. Uh, thank you, Kostas. So uh, the, uh, the step number four is schedule your time depending on your energy level. Your energy level reaches its peak at 10 a.m., approximately 10 a.m., but it's very low during the time between 2 p.m. and 4 p.m. So um, a lot of students are very productive in the morning, so it could be very useful to raise up early uh, when you are not in college at this time. So you can do your assignment, your projects, your homework, because you are in the high energy level. Others, other students, prefer the evening hours as their most productive part of the day. So we have to know ourselves we have to know the energy level during the day to schedule our time. So the only important thing is that you know for yourself on which time period you can work most efficient and adapt your schedule accordingly to your high energy period. Um, step number five is procrastination. What is procrastination? Do you have an idea about what is procrastination and the causes of procrastination? Why we are postponing? Uh, Kostas, uh, do we have here uh, students or only? No, no, we have students, but you know, I mean, it's not, we should okay. wait for them to interact. They delay doing something, for example, a nano Bernardes is defining that procrastination is the delay to doing something, but I think, too much, uh, too, too much work. But I think the question is like, why do we procrastinate? No, what is procrastination? Ah, okay. So uh, they say that to delay doing something, for example, Anano has mentioned. Okay, so, uh, so procrastination is the tendency to put off until tomorrow what we really should do today. So, or have been guilty of procrastination at some time in our lives. And procrastination is very common cause of time wastage. So the causes of procrastination is postponing the difficult. For example, if I have an assignment and I can see the assignment, I'm not able to do this task or this task. So um, postponing the difficult or setting a realistic deadline. For example, if I have an assignment and it took uh, two weeks and I set a deadline for this week, uh, I'm not able to do it. Uh, also fatigue, stress, inability to identify priorities, inability to make decision. So here, how to overcome procrastination? Uh, I advise you to create smaller sub goals and subtasks. For example, I have an assignment. In this assignment, I have four tasks. I try to divide the assignment into four parts. The first, the first task, and then I create subtasks. For example, for today, I will do task one, question number one, and that's all. So you will notice that a subtask will help you to get started with your studies and will get you motivated to do the next task as well. So this is how to overcome procrastination. 
Step number six is make sure that you don't get interrupted while preparing for assessments, not from TV, music, telephone, guests, or uh, anything else. So try to use the time efficiently. You can get more done within less time by applying power sessions. Uh, this is important that uh, you don't get interrupted while, while preparing your ass assessments or while preparing your homework. So um, let's summarize. We have six uh, steps to, um, to succeed our, our time management. There is a question, uh, yes. uh, Nadia, mm -hmm. from our student, Lara. Uh, is it possible to show previous slide for one more minute about procrastination? Uh, 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 sorry? If you can go back one slide back yes, to yes. show the slide about procrastination. Okay. I think Lara would like to discuss something with you. Okay, procrastination. Yes. So Lara, the floor is yours if you would like to discuss something. Um, hi, uh, could it be possible to make it on the next slide when you have- um, the next slide? Yeah, when you have, um, yeah, um, how to avoid procrastination. Uh, yeah, okay. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, for the first one, I discovered it with myself that it really helps me uh, to motivate me if I put a uh, smaller task and then I can make uh, more notes how much I finished uh, during the day. Uh, so, for example, I didn't write clean whole apartment, but I write clean kitchen, clean the bedroom and so on. And it's a funny thing how you can change the perception. Mm -hmm. So also we have a, a comment from our colleague uh, from uh, Western Galilee College, like one way to deal with procrastination is get just get started. Yes, just get started. Yes. <laughs> so, um, so um, time management and the six steps. Now we will review and develop skills uh, here. Uh, we will see how much you already know about yourself as a learner. Uh, we know that we have knowledge, we have skills, hard skills, soft skills, and we have attitudes. Uh, uh, here, I will talk about the difference between skills and attitudes. Do you know the difference between skills and attitudes? Please, can you unmute your microphone? Can you write in the chat? skills and attitudes. Myself, for example, I would like to listen to this. What is the difference between skills and attitudes? Okay. For courses, okay, wait. <laughs> okay. Do you have an idea about what's the difference between skills and attitudes? Attitude is something like behavior, right? Yes. Uh, Anano, yes. Um, skills are, are like talent, yes. Skills is what you can do and attitude, how you take on something. Yes, that's right. Harm, thank you. So, how much do you already know about yourself as a learner? First of all, here, I will explain the difference between skill and attitude. Skill is something that you have had to learn. You get better at a skill by practicing it and by thinking about how you can do it better. So skill, I have to practice hard or soft skill. To, um, I have to learn skill. But attitude is the way you think about something or the opinion you have. You know that attitudes develop over the years. They come from your life experiences. Sometimes you catch an attitude from uh, someone else, from your parents, from your friends. This is an attitude. An attitude is 
a behavior that you catch from your environment or you catch from your family, maybe. Maybe you catch from your friends. So skill uh, you have had to learn is something that you have had to learn. And attitude um, uh, is uh, something and it's a behavior that you catch from your environment. So here I will talk about attitudes. It's important to, for our students to know uh, the good attitudes. Why? You know that you are in control of your attitudes, so you can choose to have positive attitude, negative attitude, or neutral attitude. So what is positive attitude? So we are in control of our behavior. So we can be a positive person, we can be a negative person, or we can be a neutral person. OK, the question here, please, can you give me some a positive attitudes to say that this person is a positive person? For example, when something happens, when you experience, you know, even a failure, to see through the failure, the success, or how a failure can uh, work as a motivator for you to try yeah. again and be to be successful. I mean, this is something yes. that always we used to say that the failure is the start of success. I okay. mean, if, if you are resilient eh? and if you are positive this is the best way to move on in my opinion okay. As an example. yes okay uh, another positive attitude i'm shaking the the chat give them some time to think okay another positive attitude for example is like through the the cultural intelligence, uh, because I'm traveling yeah. now a lot and I'm interacting more with people outside of Greece than within Greece. Mm -hmm. It's like sometimes, you know, some replies, some uh, attitudes to my culture seems, you know, strange. But mm -hmm. if you are positive, you show empathy, I feel, to be, uh, to show empathy, to show like, you know, what do they mean? What, you know, how the culture affects, yeah. you know, this reply, I mean. This is like to see the things in a positive way. A lot of people in collaboration, for example, always they start, uh, when we start a project, they start with uh, worries, not with uh, new ideas. And we used to say like, no yeah. concerns, new ideas. And then, you know, concerns, they will come. Start, you know, with ideas. For example, yes. this is an example of positive after you talk about collaboration. I mean, yes, okay. I also about positive attitude that if you have some problems at work, you're taking the, on the right way, in positive way. Yeah, yes, that's right. Okay. We can uh, also we reply from our student Harm uh, from Netherlands. You focus on the good. Yes, you focus on the good. Yeah. So here are some positive also, attitudes. Also, you, you told you told me to write, you know, the comments. No. So yeah. I, don't, I, mean, I don't like to interrupt you, but David Owens always have a smile to whatever difficulty comes. Samia. From Israel, positive attitude to equity, diversity, and inclusion. Yes, that's right. So positive attitudes is a person assertive, careful, cheerful, willing to ask for help. I have a positive attitude, so I'm willing to ask for your help, Costas. I'm willing to help you. I'm willing to learn from my mistakes, uh, to share knowledge. This is a positive attitude. I'm willing to, to take advice. Also, uh, taking responsibilities, working hard, staying calm, help, uh, having uh, self-motivation, practical, reliable. So, all um, um, in this table, we can see the positive attitudes. So, a positive person is willing to share knowledge, willing to take advice, to ask for help, to help, uh, to work hard, to, um, to take responsibilities. But positive attitudes, be careful. You could turn all these positive attitudes into negative attitudes by simply adding the word not in front of them. Not, not. For example, I'm a negative person. I'm not willing to share my knowledge. I'm not willing to take risks. I'm not willing to help. I'm not positive. I'm not working hard. I'm not. So when you add not, 
in front of positive attitudes. Here we talk about negative attitudes and negative attitudes, trust me, will stop you from being successful. Nadia, I know, I, I know, because you are a negative uh, person. I know. Ah, I didn't know that. <laughs> but uh, there is a comment, you know, from uh, Samia. Also, negative yeah. attitude probably include the word "but." Yeah. Well. Okay. So remember, our students with positive attitudes. Uh, students with positive attitudes will be more successful. Having good attitude is important. Often is it's even more important than having good skills. Did you get the meaning here? Having good attitudes is even more important than having good skills. For example, I am a positive person, so, but I don't have a lot of uh, soft skills, but I'm willing to ask for help. I'm willing to, um, to work hard to catch the skills. So, because I'm positive, I have good attitudes. So, good attitudes is important. Often it's even more important than having good skills. But when I have good skills, I'm good in IT, communication, English, language, etc. But I'm a negative person. Here, I'm not willing to share my knowledge. I'm not willing to work hard to take responsibilities. So, what can I do with my um, my good skills? So, good attitude will like. Um, will give good skills, but good skills will not give like a uh, good attitude. If you have the right attitude, you can always learn a new skill or improve an old one. Do you have any comment concerning good attitude and good skills? But, but, but when we, I would like to ask you, when you are telling, when you're talking about good skills, you mean technical skills? Yes, technical skills, maybe good skills, technical, hard, or soft skills. Okay, all right. Yeah. About, uh, about soft skills, you know, I have disagreement. Somehow I disagree. Somehow okay. I disagree. Because if yeah. you have a good attitude, for example, yeah, you have, this is a characteristic of some particular soft skills. First of all, you have a self-awareness in something. Uh -huh. uh, in a uh, good attitude means that you have an empathy. Uh, mm -hmm. Good attitude means that you have you are open-minded person. Mm -hmm. Good attitude means uh, that probably your cultural intelligence and your emotional intelligence is high. Mm -hmm. uh, so regarding soft skills, you know, a good, good attitude is a good is a group of good ski, of soft skills. No. Yes. So a person, a positive person, can be an excellent uh, soft skills learner. Because um, uh, for soft skills, it, it's, it's based on positive attitudes, right? Okay, so um, now we will talk about a personal development plan or uh, for students, it's a personal learning plan. Um, first of all, what is the PDP? Uh, is the process of creating an action plan uh, based on awareness, value, reflection, goal setting, uh, planning for personal development within the context of a career as an employee or education uh, for uh, students. So living life without goals is like playing basketball without a goal ring. You have no way uh, of measuring your success. So it's important to, um, to create our PDP or uh, uh, with students, we can say our ILP, um, individual learning um, plan, so you can measure your success. Um, so uh, the first, I advise you to write down your goals. Try to write your goals. 
because goals that are written down are stronger than goals that you just think about. It's like a contract between us and our goals. It's like a commitment between our, us and, and our goals. So writing down your goals help you, ha helps you commit to them. It's important then to write your goals as positive statement. What does it mean writing goals as positive statement? I will do that. I'm able to do. I will enhance my communication skills. I will do that. I will improve my English skills. I will. So try to write your goals as positive statements. You need to clearly describe your goals. Can I add? Can I add something on this, Nadia? Yeah, yeah. Yes, I mean, yes. Sometimes we place to, to our students in order to set up the goals. You know, what is the goal of a student? To pass a, <laughs> to pass a course, no? So uh -huh. we are making the question to them like, okay, you are going to pass, I'm passing you. In the first day, I'm passing you the course. <laughs> so now write me a diary, what you, should, what you should have done in order to pass the course. So we place them to write, you know, down. The smart goal, oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, what you know they have done and they have passed the course you know from the first day so yes. now by this way they set up the goals we 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 this is the pathway that the students also recognize to pass you know the the course the same i think with anything like you would like to be a good what can i say a good basketball player uh -huh. say to them you are a good basketball player you are dosic 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 you know the slovenian player eh? <laughs> i mean what you have done in order to become a dosic Eh? Or yes. to play, you know, to Maccabi or whatever. You know, it's like, you know, and then, you know, the people, they start to think and they place the goals. I mean, this is a trick as well. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Costas. Uh, so uh, goals should always be smart, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely. So now it's time for our activity. I invite you to uh, join my uh, Google Classroom you can just uh, enter this code or I will share, just let me share my the link in the chat. Yes, you have the link. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay, done. Okay. So join my uh, classroom, uh, Google Classroom. Uh, Demonstrate self-management skills. I'm waiting for you. Okay. Uh, George, Alex, Samia, I'm waiting. <clears throat> Only three. So how many okay. students? Uh, do you want the code? Okay. Uh, okay. So here is the code. Or just uh, use the link. I think you should reload the page because uh, I see that it is nine students already on. Okay, so go to classwork activity number one. Here, uh, write down your goals for this year or 
for this semester. As students, write down your goals here, um, maybe uh, uh, related to soft skills or the academic year. Just write down your goals here. Uh, okay, um, a few minutes. Activity one. Okay, pass my exams with good grades. Okay, Costas uh, became better active listener. Uh, I have I, I have placed more goals, but I can give only one answer. I don't know. Okay, okay. finish uh, spring course with not less than nine average mark. Okay, good, Joris. George, pass my courses, expand my network, come up with my masters. Mm -hmm. So, learn university economical affairs before June. Okay. Okay, so. Um, as an Erasmus student this year, I want to improve my English and pass the toy. Okay. Okay. So, okay. I can see that all of you, you have goals, but um, your goals are not smart. So, Le, for for example, Jesus, uh, learn university economical affairs before June. This is not a smart goal. For you also, as an Erasmus student this year, I want to improve my English and pass, okay, and pass my uh, toy. My goals for this semester are to finish writing my thesis and to improve my communication skills in group with new people. Okay, thank you for your participation, but uh, your goals are not smart. Okay, uh, you have written down your goals, but here I will explain to you, okay, how to write your goals. Um, so, writing smart goals linked to PDPs. Uh, for example, a smart goal is a well thought out goal. Not all goals are smart goals. For example, I want to get better at English. As Erasmus students, I, I, I want to improve my English. Okay, so it's not a smart goal. Why it's not a smart goal? Because it doesn't explain clearly what exactly you want to do, how you will do this, or when you will do it by. So it's not a smart goal. Um, for example, uh, my goal is to succeed this year. It's not smart goal. My uh, goal for this year is to improve my soft skills. It's not a smart goal. So no, you have to how, know. How, how can you state, I want to get a better, what does it say, the colleague? I said, for example, myself, I would like to That's become better a better active listener. So how can I state, make this statement in yeah. order to be a smart goal? Okay, so specific. So I uh, would like to get uh, better at soft skills uh, to, to be a good uh, listener by doing what? By, for example, uh, following uh, lectures, by, um, uh, by, for example, uh, you have to, uh, to, to say how to do this. And 
uh, by, for example, by coming to class, by doing homework, by working hard, by you have to, to, to say how to do this. And do you have all the resources? Yes, I have. I am uh, an Erasmus coordinator, for example. I'm traveling so I can uh, uh, ask for help. I have internet. I have time. When at the end of, the, of this year, you have to, uh, to, to put the time. For example, this is a smart goal. Uh, let, let's like uh, compare between the two goals. I want to get better at English. It's not a smart goal. It's a general goal. This is a smart goal. I will get better at reading, writing, speaking, and listening in English by coming to class every day, doing my homework, uh, and assignments, following my, my teacher instructions so that I improve enough to pass the PET exam, the CPT exam, the capstone exam, and to get B1, for example, and PET exam by the end of this year. This is a smart goal. Here, do you see the, the difference? I will improve my English. It's general, but I will get better at, you have to, to be specific. It, I will yes. get it. Yes. It reminds me then, by the way, that you are um, setting up the things is very good because it's like how to write proposals. So when you are writing a proposal, you say, like, I would like to do this, and immediately you should yeah. write an example. How yes. are you going to provide this? Yeah. How you are going to provide this? What should be the deliverables? When and the criteria of evaluation. This is like yeah. this is a yeah. smart goal. If I if I got it co correct, what, how, when, and the criteria of evaluation. No. Yes, I will give you a format how to write okay. your SMART goal. Okay, so for this goal, I will get better at reading, writing, speaking, and listening in English. It's specific. It's not in French, in English. And reading, writing, speaking, and listening. So at, is it attainable? Yes. It's, uh, uh, is it attainable? Yes, it's attainable by coming to class, by, for example, watching videos on YouTube, by uh, doing my homework. Uh, is it measurable? Yes. Uh, so uh, that I improve enough to pass the PET exam and get B1, uh, to pass the CBT exam, to pass the capstone exam. Yes, I can measure my goal. And when? By the end of this year. So it's uh, a smart goal. Here, uh, Costas, example of format for setting goals. So what do I want to learn here? I will enhance or improve my communication skills, my soft skills, but soft skills in general, try to make it specific. I want to improve my body language. I want to improve my communication skills. Um, for example, what communication skills? You have to be specific. And what do I have to do, for example? to enhance my uh, English language. Um, I will uh, try to be with native speakers. I will try to follow uh, my English instructor. Uh, I will try to do this. And what support and resources will I need? Maybe I need internet, I need books, I need uh, my teacher's help. And how will I measure success? Here, Costas, to measure success, it's not only grades. For example, uh, a positive feedback from my English teacher, it's, a, it's for, for me, it's, it's enough. F uh, for example, a positive feedback from your customer, from your manager, from your colleagues, from your teacher, is for me a success. A good grade is a success. A submission on time is for me a success. It depends of the of your goal. So, so a target date for review by the end of this week, by the end of this month, by the end of this year. This is a smart goal. So try now to use th this format and try to rewrite your goal on Google Classroom. So go here and activity um so here activity two what you have to do 
rewrite your, write down your goal, carefully think about your goal and fill out the sentence with details that will ensure that is smart, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time, timely or time bound. Then write an explanation on how your goal is specific, what is specific in your goal, and how to measure your goal, and attainable, how to do, relevant, what do you need as resources, and time basis. I will give you uh, a few minutes to do this, uh, and I will see um, how to improve, how to enhance your writing, uh, your writing and your goals. Okay, any comment? Any question? Okay. Uh, my goal is to be successful in my field. It's general, it's not smart. Here. Yeah. Okay, waiting for your smart goals. Nice tool, the Google, the, the Google Classroom. I have never yes, used it. Yes, <laughs> and it's easy to. Okay. Okay, for Clemens, I will get better at reading and listening in English just reading and listening, by coming to class every day, doing my homework, assignments, and do toy training on internet, good, so that I improve enough to pass the toy exams in September. Well done, Clemens. Uh, yes, this is a smart goal. Now uh, you know how to write a smart goal. Costas, uh, improve my active skills, uh, specific, Active listening skills, I would like to say. So probably I missed the listening. Ah, okay. Uh, wait the other to finish and then reply. Uh, measurable the feedback from others and my self-review, yes. Um, Time-based, but uh, attainable, how? How to do, by doing what? I, I reply this, how to do this? Yeah. Uh, by waiting the other to finish and then reply. But, but here you put it specific, wait the other to finish. Specific. Uh, here. So probably, you know, you see, I'm not a good, yeah. teacher, good student. <laughs> so specific, improve my active skills. Mm -hmm. um, attainable how to do that by waiting the other to finish and then reply. Correct. Okay, uh, measurable, yes, uh, the feedback from my colleagues, from teachers, from, yes, positive feedback. It's for me, it's an improvement. And time base it immediately, yes, and review it with my close person, my wife every week. Okay, yes, it's, um, it's a smart goal. Well done, Costas. So, George, my goal for this semester is to successfully complete all my courses with a superior grade by studying two hours every day, establish meaningful connections within my field by speaking to all people, okay, and determine a well-defined topic for my master's thesis by researching scientific subject prior to sleep. Yes, it's um, it's a smart goal because you it's a specific. Uh, it's timely, it's attainable, yes. Um, okay, by the end of uh, September, Lara, by the end of September, I will finish all the exams for this year with at least 
eighth grade. But Lara here, uh, you have to be specific which exam, okay, exams, but try to specify the exams and attainable how? By working hard, by following your teacher's instructions, by doing what? Okay, improve Spanish speaking. Yes, now I can see because um, the time is running. Uh, I can see that you have an idea on how you can write your your smart goals. Okay, so um, I think that I think that I have finished my um, my presentation. So. Um, uh, thank you for your attention. I hope that you enjoyed my uh, my presentation. But uh, before uh, giving you the floor uh, for uh, asking and uh, and uh, comments, I invite you to log in your Moodle. Go to Moodle, please. And here, go down, down, down. And here, uh, demonstrate here. Okay, I have shared with you all the material um, related to this lecture. Here, unit specification. Uh, what is unit specification? Is all the knowledge learning outcomes and the, uh, the skills learning outcomes, the performance criteria. Uh, here, learning notes. Instead of using the PowerPoint, you can um, uh, um, use the learning notes. And here um, I have uploaded a quiz. Uh, it's open already. You can do it. Uh, um, it's open till Monday. Okay, the floor is yours. Uh, do we have any question? Um, is it clear? Any commands? Yeah, there is a question uh, regarding um, in, in the chat from George K from HMU. Shouldn't the goal and its requirements be separate? Uh, shouldn't the goal and its requirement uh, be separate? Uh, no, because uh, it will be like a general goal. Uh, the goal must be smart uh, because uh, if it's like a specific and a smart and we know the requirements to uh, for this goal, so it's uh, you can succeed the goal but if it's general i have no idea on how to measure i have no idea when i have no idea what i need so uh, i think that uh, goals and uh, uh, requirements uh, we can't separate uh, both of them uh if i if i may please um for example um i'm i'm actively in uh, aerospace and for example, when we have a goal or a requirement, we state, for example, that the payload should weigh, say, no more than five kilograms, which is the goal. It can't weigh more than five kilos. And then afterwards, however, what is required to actually achieve that goal is a whole different story. For example, then there you'd subdivide it into subcategories and say, for example, lightweight materials will be used, et cetera. So uh -huh. I, I understand, and it's, and it's very intriguing the, the way um, you discussed how we should break out our goals. However, I think um, not necessarily, I, I find it quite challenging though that, that I need to connect the, the goal and what is required to achieve it within say, for example, the same sentence, instead of saying, for example, what do I want to achieve and then how am I gonna achieve it? So personally, I, I usually break it up into two questions. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, I think that the same uh, uh, goal plus requirements or smart goal the same. How to achieve or uh, for this goal? Uh, I think that uh, you have to follow requirements to reach your goal. So what you have to do, write down a smart goal no need to follow all the requirements and we can reach our goals. I would say, you know, you mentioned right. something at the very beginning, Nadia, and probably, you know, I, I can reply to somehow, yeah. George. it's like, I, I, so, somehow I agree with Nadia and this is the approach as I told you how to write the proposal because this is the same idea. What I would like to do is the question and then how to do it. 
So yeah. like when you are writing a proposal, you say like, what I would like to do, like for example, dissemination plan or whatever. And then you write down the tasks, how to do them. So the tasks is like how to do, to, to do the objective. So the objective is the target and then how to do it are the tasks. And then you, how to measure the, 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 what are the deliverables and how, how are you going to measure the success of the tasks and then the deliverables. So I, I will say uh, this is the same logic and um, in anything, George, in a project, in, in the life. I think this is the nice thing that I got personally myself from, An from Nadia's part is like, it's one story, either are goals or writing the proposals. Like, so smart goals includes everything. And this is my reply, somehow discussion uh, uh, to what George very correctly has mentioned and also what Nadia very correctly has uh, presented. Uh, okay. My opinion. Uh, any other question from the audience? I cannot see anything on the chat. I can see from Alex. Uh, you need to write the goal and the means to achieve it. And then I think that the answer is yes. It's like, what did we say? Objective and tasks. Objective is what you would like to do. Task, how to do the objective. How, to do. how are yeah. you going to measure that you have done the tasks in order to, to achieve the objective? Uh, and always, uh, I mean, no, I'm not going to continue this. Uh, so let's give the floor now to are there any, any other questions to Nadia? I would like to thank Nadia for this very nice presentation. For me, you know, I got, you know... Uh, just, I, I will it. upload my presentation, just... Um, okay. But uh, you have the learning notes and uh, the UN specification I have uploaded already on Moodle. Excellent. And please uh, try to do the, the quiz. They have to do it because at the end of the school, you know, this is what I'm going to check with the supervisors. Uh, so the floor now, thank you very much, Nadia. The floor is now to our colleague from Slovenia, Tomas. Yeah, hi everyone. <clears throat> you are a co-host, so you can share your screen. Yeah. Uh, just to mention, I put also into the quiz which Nadia prepared also my question. So you can do it all at once. So you don't need to make two quizzes, only one. So just uh, that you know. So let's see, because with Thomas computer, we have a, a, a love story, me and Thomas computer. No? Yeah, always. It works. It works. <laughs> send to Zoom. I need to send to Zoom error. Okay, it's now better. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. We can start. Okay, good. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Uh, so, as usual, I'm the last one, I think, cost us all these online lectures, usually, no, no, or the no. first one. We continue, you know, even after, you know, the school in Crete, we have yeah. a couple of them, you know. Good. Later. Okay, uh, so I will speak about uh, Management 3.0. So we all know that there are many management models and theories which are present currently. Everyone is talking about some agility. Is it business agility, enterprise agility, digital agility, software agility, and so on. But uh, we know that this agility cannot be achieved only uh, with the traditional way of uh, management, but it needs to also change the leadership mindset, business leadership mindset, and uh, promote a uh, different way of thinking and managing the business. And uh, this, this is my purpose of this presentation is to, to show one approach, which is called management 3.0. Uh, but before we begin with that, uh, let's use some, some tools, uh, especially this personal heat map, which will also give you a little bit introduction to myself. So my name is Tomasz, living in Slovenia. Uh, and uh, I currently work as an IT project manager as a, in Aspar uh, ICS. So we are the IT of Spar for the countries Austria, Slovenia, Italy, Croatia, and Hungary. Uh, beside that, I'm also teaching uh, allowed to do some hobbies like hiking, cycling, traveling. 
Um, so basically, I would say I have three lives. <laughs> One is business work, the other is teaching and family. So, and I need to uh, to to spend uh, for each and every one uh, some amount of time. Uh, and uh, okay, coming back to this personal heat map, uh, I would say this is quite interesting tool to to present yourself. For example, as a new team member, you are coming to, to to the project, and of course, if you don't present yourself or something like that, uh, then you're just some kind of number. But uh, when you present, uh, like for example, like this personal heat map where you work, education, personal life, values, goals, uh, hobbies, and so on, it really can make you difference, especially in the communication with the team members, because we all know that communication is the key to success of any activity. Um, even if you work with some team players or, or you are part of the team uh, for a long time, you can even play this game and try to uh, basically you write the this heat map for your colleague, and then you will see how uh, your thinking. Thomas, is then, uh, Thomas, yeah. Thomas uh, just a confirmation. Are you changing your transparencies? If yes, we cannot see this rotation. If no, everything is fine. Uh, do you see? No, your transparency is on the first one. Okay, then I will start and again. Because I have only the black screen. So, shit. My computer is always a bit costless. Do you see now? Not yet. Not yet. Now, okay. Try to change transparency to check that you know everything works. I don't know what is happening. After I I upgraded the Zoom client, it's uh, it's then going to the error. Okay, can you see me now? We can see, but try to rotate your, try to change the slide to check that it works. Huh? Yeah, yes, fine. Okay, good. Okay, so let's see now what is the difference between management and leadership. Uh, I, I put here the menti.com and uh, please go into this uh, link, menti.com and to write this code. And think about the situation that you have the most fun and be energized. It can be today in the past. It cannot. It can be in your personal life. It can be in your private life. It can be your office, whatever in the sports. Okay, try to enter when you have the most fun. Okay, because I felt a, a member of the team ownership when I played American football team. Oh, cool. Team of old colleagues, we did a good job, and because of that, we have plenty of time to have fun on the side. Summer school team. When I was swing surfing three kilometers from the beach, I had the most fun when I worked as a team and achieved our goals. So how did, did you feel that? I mean, I also play a lot of basketball and for me it was really passionate when we won or in last second you throw the ball and goes through the net tsup, and you won. And then you say, yes. And then you have really fun. 
Did you feel this also in your life sometimes? And I say, yes, I did it. Or we did it. Think about how you can bring this into your work environment. Then you will say, yes, I like to be in the office. Yes, we did it. I mean, this will happen when you are setting the same uh, targets, the same uh, 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 with your goals, group, with the same goals. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, this is exactly what I'm thinking about. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So basically, you can you need to have this atmosphere, your I would say culture environment that really supports each other, and you're really passionate well, when you're going to the this environment to the office, you, and then you work together. Also, it's not only to share the same goals, also is to trust the others, yeah. to be comfortable with the others. I mean, this is like also very important. Correct. So what is management? Uh, you know, management, usually we, we talk about uh, people who are managing the organization, individually, these are the managers. But on the other hand, uh, about management, they are speaking about uh, the people who are setting the strategy of the organization, coordinating the efforts of employees or even volunteers to accomplish objective, and through the different applications of available resources. This means financial, natural, technological, human resources, uh, all of this together. But it's the main point here is that uh, managers have direct reports. On the other hand, we have leaders. So what is the leadership? So what do you think is the biggest difference between the manager and the leader? I think that manager, I mean, this is not, you know, uh, forbidden. Eh? A good leader could be a good manager, but I don't know if a good manager can be a leader. Uh, the same vice versa. But I think my, my, I mean, if you think, I don't know. Manager deals with everyday things. A leader has a vision. A manager, yes. you know, dictates. Leaders uh, influence, uh, inspire. Yes. Uh, this is, you know, in, on my mind. You know, the first. You know, uh, a, a leader has a big, the big vision. Probably the manager does not have the big vision. So this is like, in my, my opinion, the differences. But and the major difference that is that now. leaders have a. Uh, followers, but not the followers, as you said on maybe on the Facebook, I'm, I'm following you uh, or on Twitter. So, you know, if we, we have usually in the organizations, we have some leaders. These are informal, let's say, bosses in the brackets. Whenever they say we need to do this or we go that direction or we go that way, we immediately follow them because we trust them. So this means that they guide the other individuals, teams, or even entire organization. So this is the biggest difference between the managers and, and the leaders. Coming back to the uh, history of management, uh, we know that... Uh, so can I ask you something? Because yeah. I, dis I disagree with this, I'm sorry. Okay. I mean, a political party leader is like a leader, like, do you do you agree with this? If you go like you know, a head of a political party is a leader because he has a followers because he has a voters. But does yeah. this mean that he's a leader? So anyone in in history that he was a, a head of a of, of, of a state was a leader because all of them they had the followers. Yeah, always you need to have a followers if you're a leader. I, but I'm, I, I disagree I'm with this. now a little bit more in. Uh, I said it's more organizational way, not in the political way. But uh, I mean, but anyhow, the leaders has followers. If you have a manager, then you have reports. So this means they're going like in the army. You know, I need to speak with this one. And, and oh, 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 I, I will say that no leaders can be in the army because yeah. if you are in the army and you go f and you can influence your team, they will follow you. You take Correct. care of the team. It's not you know, army is not only orders. Mm -hmm. But you have really strict uh, way of command in the army, yes. Depends on the culture, I guess. 
Okay. <laughs> I don't know how it is in Greece, but at least in this area. Oh, I'm but Diana, there are cultures like in China that the general is like there and the soldiers they follow without asking, and there are other armies that they take the initiative, the soldiers take the initiative. The soldiers, mm -hmm. you know, they judge the captain. You know, it's low, it's not the it's not all the armies the same. And eh? you follow orders, no armies, but the way that mm -hmm. you are moving, but anyhow, I should stop, I think. Let's continue. Uh Okay, uh, so the history of uh, management, uh, it's quite a long time and uh, we can see that historically now, more than 100 years, it's one of the biggest changes that is happening. How we are managing the organization, how we are changing the management of the organizations, people and so on. We know that majority of these management practices, which are still a lot of present in uh, current world when we are living is, let's say 100 years old. They are coming from 1920, 1930s. So this is when we call the management one zero. So here it's a, more as a command and control People assume that organization consists of the parts that, and that improvement on the whole requires monitoring, repairing, and replacing the full the, those parts. So this means they are uh, really strict. Um, so resources can be easily shifted, you know, because in let's say 100 years ago the technology was really not uh, in so high technology level as it is today. And everyone who was working in one place can be easily replaced and put on the other side. And of course, you had on the top, you had a boss or the manager who controls everything. So command and control. Uh, management 2.0, it's also a little bit later, some 10, 15 years later came. Uh, so it is around 1930. Uh, they were start already recognizing that people are the most valuable asset of the company and that the manager, managers have to become so-called servant leaders of those people. But still they didn't think globally or systematically. Still they tried to improve the individual parts of the system because they thought if they improve the individual part of the system, also the whole system will be uh, optimized. Still, it's, everything is top-down uh, communication. Management 3.0, this is the new approach, or basically it's not the approach, it's more or less, uh, more or less as a framework, uh, which is looking at work system and has few very simple principles. Focusing is on the management of the system and not on the people itself. So we are speaking about managing the system as itself, not individuals. And uh, what they want to achieve, to engage the people and their interactions, it enables people to improve the system and help to delight all clients. But of course, we have two ways of management. Of course, it's a dilemma to control or not to control. We all know that now we are really living in this technology area and central control of the complex system. It's basically impossible. It's very hard or better to say it's not possible. It does not work. Because the this center node of the network cannot possibly contain all the information that it's needed to make good decision everywhere. And then we have different type of uh, management is also dictatorship versus anarchy. So on one hand you say, this you need to do. On the other side you say, you, you are allowed to do everything. So which one you think is the better? None of them. These are the two extremes. Yes, correct. <laughs> we all we all know when you have a small ch children or the kids when they are there. So usually 
you should put them in some safe place in order to learn and then of course you make you need to make some boundaries where can where can they work or where can play even in sometimes they, they need to hurt a little bit because they need to where is the boundary and then they learn and they improve let's see now seven levels of delegations uh, so how we delegate the work or the activities so this is really the uh, symmetrical model in working both directions so we have these seven uh, delegation first one is to tell so this means this is dictatorship i will tell you what you need to do so this is the decision on the other side the seventh one is to delegate so this means i I fully trust you, you will do what is necessary to do. Then in between, you have the second one, Excel. So usually this was the approach some years ago that you say, I had an idea and then I need to sell it to my boss. And then when I sell it to the boss, then this idea will be followed. So this means I try to uh, sell it to the others. Consult. Uh, this is the approach that uh, you consult your team and then based on consultations, you make a decision at the end. The fourth one is agree. We will all agree together what we will do. I mean, as a team, we agree what we will do. The fifth one is advice. So this means I give you advice and then it's up to you to decide. I would say this is my current mode with my kids usually unusual situation so look this is my opinion because my daughters are now 21 23 years old should be uh, grown up enough that they can make a decision based on my feedback inquire means that uh, you are just informed what they have done and seven we said this is the uh, the the thing that you just delegate and say do it whatever you want, this is the direction. So let's go now to the Menti. Just give me a second to open it. Uh, so which leadership do you prefer or do you like? So first one is tell the, the most right is to have autonomous decisions. So if you don't, if you are a student, for example, you can choose which model you like. Come on, here we are. Uh... 23 people, we should have 23 yeah. replies. If we have two and three, means that the other 20, you know, they are sleeping. Yeah. Avatars. <laughs> Chat GPT. We have one command and control. The second one is inquire, three in consulting mode, and two for delegation. Anyone more? We have 24, okay, 22. Can someone comment? His or her decision why they selected this way of leadership. Uh, 
Thomas, for me, uh, I think um, uh, the style is delegation. Uh, I choose delegation because um, uh, I think that um, when uh, we delegate our uh, employee, it will encourage our employee to uh, to be responsible to uh, to reach uh, objectives. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, a good way is the delegation for leadership. Yeah, I think it's a good argument, uh, but. Uh... Can we say that uh, in every situation, can we have the same way of delegation style? Of course, no. We have here quite a lot of consulting. So this means that you will consult a team and then you make a decision. Yeah, Thomas, it depends on the situation. Maybe uh, we need delegation in this situation and other situation we need, uh, for example, control and command and other situation we need advice. So it depends. Mm -hmm. It depends. Yeah, correct. Yes. So here, I think it's more the response. What approach do you personally use or you would like to have it in your situation? You personally more like. So we see that some of you are more in the mode that you would like to tell the others what they want to do. But as we said, it's depend on the situation and also on the environment. I mean, you don't tell to the others what to do. You consult the others what they should do. It's different. Because if you if it's you are going to tell the others what they should do, it's like an order. But you yeah. know, I think that consulting is like something like an advice. And uh, for like you you advise them what they should do based to your experience or what do you think, and then mm -hmm. the other one should react because you yeah, provide... sometimes yeah I would just want to say that sometimes you really need to make a decision, and maybe there is no other options. But this also depends on the on the case. Yeah, of course. Also, uh, Thomas, it depends on our team. If it's um, an eff effective team with positive attitudes, we can delegate. But if it's like uh, uh, an ineffective team with negative attitudes, uh, they are not willing to, to be responsible to work hard. Here, we have to control and to command, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, George, please. Thank you. I think it also depends on the circumstance of the individuals. So, for example, someone who's uh, new to a job, he may be more suitable to be commanded and told what to do, whereas someone who's more senior could simply advise or in inquire. Mm -hmm. So I think that all of them have the correct, have the have their own type where it's, it's suitable. However, it really depends on the circumstances, and then that's up to the individuals to judge. Yeah, correct. I mean, you're, you're on the right, uh, I think. Let's have now an example, which will, I think, enforce our uh, thinking. So we have a delegation board example. So what do you think? Hiring people should we decide or we should delegate? Finding a people, should we delegate or we should command and control and so on? Breaking a team, forming a team, salary formula, merit money. Merit money means that, for example, you got a bonus, I don't know, 10,000 euros, and then you would like to spend throughout the members. Who should decide?
Hey, this would be interesting result to see. Don't look my slide before you submit <laughs> that you are not influenced. Now we will see statistics. Costa, this is your area. My, my area is laser physics, not statistics. <laughs> it's interesting how it is changing with the number of uh, people submitting results. Okay, let's wait for a minute and then let's try to comment some decisions. Let's go. Uh, okay, please, you can still submit. And uh, but let's now in between try to a little bit uh, talk about hiring people. Traditionally, how it is done hiring people? How we get new employee? It is in Slovenia how we are doing. Uh, HR is doing some notice that we are hiring some person. Then this uh, goes to the some web pages or some headhunter. Then we got it into the. Then you got a, a list, then it's make a short list, then few interviews, and then candidate is selected or not selected. What kind of danger we could have in hiring people if we're going, let's say, more this traditional way that, let's say, only the boss selects or the manager selects the the correct employee who was uh, who was applying to the uh, to the position. However, the boss uh, could, couldn't know all uh, specifics about, about the working position, so he make he can make a, a wrong decision. So he must consult his uh, team with uh, some uh, lower level management and so on. Yeah, I think Maxim, you are on the right track. So the, the point is that uh, if only let's say the boss try to select the, the person, we could come a danger that this person will not fit into the team as a personality, not on the technical level. Uh, I think all of you are majority of you, you are watching the sports. Is it football, basketball, volleyball, whatever. I think you have seen several times that you have a team who has a perfect individuals in the team, but they didn't want the championship. But on the other hand, you had a, let's say, a normal team with the good players, but not any superstar in those teams. And they were able to win because they were really as a one team. So hiring people could be a direction, new way how you're hiring that you are involving more, more the team, not just only the boss, for example. Uh, 
fining a team. So this means that they can, they can get uh, penalties. Also can be part of transparency and uh, the people who are doing uh, also salaries, for example. Uh, for example, at this in Slovenia, we don't have any public salaries. So this means that I do not know how much salary has uh, my coworker. But maybe in the open teams and transparent teams, this can be even shared that everyone knows how much money he gets because it's also everything transparent. Spending money below 500 euros, uh, this I think could be also idea to delegate because do you think that really as a boss or your, are you as a manager of the team, you need to know of every euro which is going to the team. I think as we have as Nadia and uh, Costas before, and even I think George, you said that if you're really trusting the team, uh, then everyone is doing as a best owner of those money and uh, he or she will not spend it for some stupid things, but he will be responsible for that. So it's all about responsibility and trust. But I think what we have now discovered, we have in different situation, we have different way of delegation, which is necessary to do. So here is the example of one delegation board. Uh, so on many cases, you can have uh, agree, uh, salary formula, uh, merit money budget. It's more on the command and control level, spending below after is more on the this side. Okay, I don't know how much time you have cost us. I think not too much. Let's go. Okay, wait, wait, 10 more minutes. Okay, good. Then I will skip this exercise, but you can do it uh, yourself. How you will organize a picnic for 30 people um, should you delegate or should you control it? So different types of management, as we said, we have dictators and anarchists. So dictators say you are not allowed to do anything, expect what I authorize you to do. Anarchists say, go ahead, take whatever control you want. Uh, but we all, we, what we already discussed, the better choice, choice is to say you can do, what you want, expect for the areas where I place some restrictions. So, as you said, for the children, you know, we put it into this, uh, I don't know how it's English word, where it can play, but, uh, you know, they cannot cross the boundaries because it's protected. Then, uh, what is also important when we are changing to organization to be, to be this agile organization, uh, it could have an issue when we have us versus them, because we divide the organization into two, two ways or two, two areas. One is old way of working, so this means they have some old system, some old way of working, and we have new way of working. And then it can become a huge wall between these two, because they can make fun of it. Ah, you are on the other side, we are the new one, we have these sexy new things, and we like them, we, you need to do these dinosaurs, and so on. So you as a manager, or you as a lead of this organization, is the question how you will deal with this situation. I don't have answer or some direction to that, but this is the danger when you're doing this kind of stuff. We know when we are going to the agile world, uh, we are speaking about self-organizing teams. Uh, this means that the task is delivered to a team and then team self-organized based on the com competencies, skills, knowledge, time, how they will execute this task. And of course, the purpose of the managers is here to help those teams to, to execute this task in the amount of available resources. 
Also, what we are speaking about this new area is that we have so-called P-shaped people. Uh, this means that they have very good knowledge about one area and they have still horizontal level of good knowledge of other areas. So this means they can speak with different people and uh, bring the knowledge into the team. And of course, we need a little bit less managers, but still we need them. So it's not about that we will all the managers just fire because we are doing agile stuff. So self-organizing team choose the best way how to accomplish their work. Instead of being directed from the boss or some team lead, how they should run or how should they execute the necessary uh, stuff. And Thomas, in this case, in this case, who is setting the timeline? Yeah, by theory, is there is uh, the team. The team. Yeah, by the theory, but practically, usually we get from the bosses always. Okay. Um, and teams are structured and empowered by the organization to organize and manage their work. But here is big but. Uh, there are many people that cannot work in self-organized manner. We are somehow try to hide this big but. How you will deal with those guys or ladies who are not capable of self-organizing? So T-shaped people, it's very, uh, so here is primary skill. So for me, it's, let's say, project management skills. This is my primary skill. But as I work on the different projects, I'm broadening the knowledge of different areas. So I can speak with finance. I can speak with development. I can speak with the logistics and so on. Because throughout this project, I'm getting this horizontal knowledge, not deep, but basically I'm gathering more and more knowledge about that. So what about the measures or measurements? Here is very good uh, statement or quote from Eli Goldratt. Uh, tell me how you will measure me and I will tell you how I will behave. So if you measure me in an illogical way, don't complain about my illogical behavior. Keep in mind this quote when you're trying to change the way work is done and measure the success. Let's see an example. You want to do one kilogram of screws, 100 kilograms of screws. So this is the measurement. Which one you will do? I don't know, 100 of this, 10 of this, or one this big one. If I do one this big one, 100 kilos, so don't complain about why I have done this. You said I need to do 100 kilos, so I have done it. Mm. So all these norms and measurements which are in place, try to revisit them and try to adapt them to the current uh, situation about this agility point of view. Behavior and culture. So we know that the main asset of the organizations are people and data. And then behind are also the processes. So without motivated people, also customers will not be satisfied. We all know. But this means that manager needs to enable motivation, dedication, creativity of the people. It's not an easy job to be a manager. <laughs> <laughs> you need to be like a father and the mother of your kids, your employees. And especially now, I don't know how it's now in different areas of Europe, even in Nigeria, uh, but we have now in Slovenia situation so low unemployment that basically who wants to work, it can work. We have, I think, three or four percent only unemployment rate currently. 
So this means that we really need to fight for every person who wants to join our company and also protect to not to lose. So this means that we are now coming to the area uh, about these moving motivators, uh, which uh, tells you what motivates you. So this means you have this curiosity. Uh, what this means, curiosity? This means that the worker have plenty of things to investigate and to think about. Then you have honor. Workers feel proud that their values are reflected in their work. Acceptance, colleagues approve of what people do and who they are. M mastery, the work challenges people competences, but it is within their abilities. Someone wants to have a power to influence what happens around them. The others want to have a freedom. People are independent of the others. The relatedness, so this means that people have a good social contacts with others in their work. Some would like to take orders. Goals, one they are really goal oriented, wants to have a status, they want to have a good position, something on the business card, a senior leader, and they are recognized by, the, by their colleagues. Uh, Let's do this exercise. I think we will have uh, this few minutes just to see. Costas, we have only four minutes, yes. Correct, but I would like to ask you something. Yeah. Regarding motivators, I mean, what, what do you think is like the motivators that the students or any citizens should have, internal or external motivators? How do you mean internal and external? Uh, Internal motivator, for example, is like uh, it's not about money. An external motivator is money. I, I have a lot of colleagues that I, I'm asking them. I would mm -hmm. like you to get involved in the European University. I would like you to do this. And the first thing that they are telling, asking me, asking me, is like how much money I will get. This is an external yeah. motivator. When the money stops, they stop. Yeah. <laughs> internal motivator is like to have the. V to have the ambition to get better. This does not depend on money. Yeah, correct. It's an internal motivator. So what do yeah. you, what do you yeah, add then, to Internal or external motivator? Yeah, these are from your definition, these are internal motivators. So what motivates you to, to be? And this exercise is also good for your new employees, for new hires, because you pretty much know what is the purpose of your organization, what kind of these motivators you have in the organization and then when this new guy is coming and then you can select then you can say please select three topics that really motivates you uh personally this and is then, also i will say this is also the impact of a leadership because a leader will and will cultivate the internal motivator the internal motivation of he, of he, of his or her member of the team a not good leader will bribe. Take this money, do. When the money finished, no team. For example, if I want to have a freedom in my decisions, how I reach the goal, and let's say I have a company which is really strictly oriented, I don't know, manufacturing process. Here, my assumption is that you don't have so much freedom. Then, of course, if freedom is my top motivator, then this means that the place in this company, I will not be satisfied. So I should not join this company. If, for example, curiosity and freedom is my top, then probably education area would be something which will I will very much enjoy. Because we have freedom to investigate. Of course, we have some project and what needs to do. But you have freedom how you will come to the results. And you have curiosity because you will do something which, is, which you are interested in. So this means that this position is for you perfect or your search and development environment. Um, if you want to have, I don't know, as we said, some status, then of course, then you need to be a little bit senior and then you have written, okay, I am senior, senior, I don't know what, and then, you know, this is me. So it's good exercise to, 
even for your current employees, but even better is for the newcomers that you check them, let's say these moving motivators, how, how they can reflect uh, to your organization or the position that they are applying. Okay, few uh, just uh, to finish. Uh, also, kudos. Uh, this is also very nice stuff. Uh, usually, um, in the organizations, we are not too much, uh, how to say, we don't get any positive feedback that something we have done good because this is natural to do it. But usually, when we are doing something not so good, we immediately get some uh, noise. Let's put it in the nice words. And this kudos is really nice tool. These are the cards, uh, which you as a team member, you can say, Samia, today you have done great job. You have finished this project. This is my kudos to you. And then you put it on some table where everyone can see it. Maybe it next motivates me to do better job next time, yeah. the day after. Yeah. But then I will say, Maxim, totally awesome. You solved this problem, which we had for several weeks, and you, you done it, you nailed it. And you, again, you write, and again, make it public on some board in your room of your team, or even in, in some corridor that everyone can see. And you can have then very simple stuff, and then you can have a small box there, or a little bit larger box, and then just put some sweets, some chocolate, some milk chocolate inside. And then after one week or one month, you open this box, and then we have a small part in it as a team. And you will see how much this connection between the people will increase, or the, the, the cooperation and trust between them. But these are really some very really small, small things which you can do and improve the the relationship and the uh, uh, culture. Uh, OK, final words, uh, Google st study company's culture. You know, Google had uh, one project uh, that they have analyzed 180 teams. Uh, and then uh, they try to figure out why some teams are better, some people are worse. And then these are the five uh, outcomes. So one is dependability. Team members get things done on time and meet expectation, structure, and clarity. High-performing teams have a clear goal and have well-defined roles within the group. So we are again what Nadia was saying. So we have a smart goal. Meaning, of course, if we don't see a meaning what we are doing, then it's hard to motivate. Impact. Uh, and also the last one is psychological safety. So. Uh, we know we are living in the, again, in this VUCA world, as it is called. Um, so we need to take risks in order to, to have new solutions to new services, new products. And of course, this means also the failures. Um, so this means that if the culture does not allow failure, then uh, we are doomed. So and then once more and you are out. So this really does not motivate uh, innovation. Uh, you know that even some companies has uh, some so-called fuck-up days. Uh, this means that the, even the best engineers, the best people come to the stage and announce to their co-workers what they have failed. Uh, and this is all about learning because they don't want that someone is repeating the same thing as they have done. Uh, so what are their... Uh, these eight habits of high effective uh, managers. So be a good coach. You see the technical skills are then really on the low level or really uh, almost the, the last uh, uh, topic. Empower your team and don't micromanage. So micromanaging means you need to do this. In 10 minutes, you need to do that. After half an hour, you can go to the toilet. You need to come back in 15 minutes. So it's not about micromanaging. You need to give them the direction uh, where they need to go and then uh, ask them what they need and then you try to help them. Express interest in the employee success and well-being. Be productive and result-oriented. Be good communicator. Help your employees with career development. 
also personal development plan, what was Nadia uh, explaining before, clear vision and strategy for the team, and have a technical skill so can advise them. Uh, okay, so I will stop here in the respect of time to, to be still on time. Thank you very much, Thomas. I think that your presentation very well matched and be complementary to what Nadia has presented. Uh, very nice, I would say, very nice conclusions. Uh, I will make a comment regarding um, the list of who is a good manager. There is a very nice statement of the of one of the partners of Boston Consulting when he said that you, as I joined Boston Consulting, I was very good in technical skills. But, you know, all my way as a partner, what I have improved, it was the soft skills. Communication, manage, leadership, these are the things that made me, you know, up all the way up to a, a company. And this is like the importance of the soft skills uh, as a conclusion, like that extends your, the lifetime of the worker, you know, within the company or within institution. And this makes the difference, you know, by the years. Uh, all these kind of competencies that makes a good leader, because a leadership is a group of soft skills, as any soft skill is a group of other soft skills. Uh, and I would like to ask you a last a question, like Scrum, as a, as a framework, how similar is to the management 3.0 as a framework? I mean, Scrum has a, Scrum is also the framework, I would put it that way. But in order that Scrum works, also this uh, management 3.0 principles needs to be employed. As we see, self-organizing team, uh, leader is the servant leader of the people and so on. Um, the Scrum team, I mean, the Scrum approach is really, but this is really my personal opinion, is very good way how you can split or how you can achieve some task which you at the beginning you really don't know how it result will look like but you know that the direction but then you split it into the smaller pieces and then you can monitor the progress and get the feedback and then you can adjust the scope of, of the functionalities so this is from the functional point of view or from the content point of view the other very good topic uh, of the Scrum is that you, you have this time box. So this means that you are in this particular time box, you are focusing really on delivering things that you have promised or which you have defined. So that this means that you are not multitasking. If you are multitasking, you can make an example, write three, family names or three first names, seven characters, and then do it in when you write it from the beginning, like Tomas, like uh, Costas, like uh, Samia, and then the other way, try to do it uh, letter by letter, one by one. And then you see the difference, how long you will do it. And really this multitasking is one of the, the biggest time consuming uh, stuff that you should try to reduce and with the scrum you can do it you okay, can reduce this multitasking yes and there's nadia mentioned at the beginning regarding time management time management dictates multitasking is a killer of a time management yeah correct and you should really think about how you can reduce these interruptions uh, oh yeah distractions yeah Mobile phones, especially emails, uh, SMS, is, um, so many different teams and so on. Anyhow, I think that we should stop here. Uh, we're going, thank you very much, both of the, of the speakers, Thomas and Nadia, Nadia and Thomas, the participants. We are going to upload the video, the link of the video to the Moodle platform. I hope that in Crete, through this, uh, the active workshops and the rest of the lectures, we are going to uh, connect the puzzle and have an idea of the importance and the interlink and the interlinking of all uh, what we have discussed in this in this course. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much, uh, Nadia. Thank you very much, Thomas. And yeah. uh, our next meeting will be lively in Crete. Eh? Mm -hmm.
<laughs> I hope that everything will come uh, very smooth and we are going to have a very nice interaction, a nice time. So yeah. enjoy and until next week, uh, stay safe. Bye. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Thank Thanks you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Bye.